Today is a beautiful day to learn some math. Let's get started. We're given this factor completely problem using a trinomial expression. First thing for us to do, we're going to rewrite the problem. We always want to get a fresh start, right? So then now we have to notice, is there anything that is common in the problem? Hmm. I have a three, I have a two, I have a five. Nothing common with them. But I have an X here, I have an X here, I have an X here. So what we should do is try to remove that X. So now let's look for the lowest X we have. We have X to the fourth, X to the third, X to the second. The lowest one would be the two, right? So we'll remove X squared. So now you gotta think about it as three X to the fourth divided by X squared. And the way you can do that is, I will jot it down on the side. So we'll have three X to the fourth, right? Over X squared. Three divided by the invisible one would give us just three. Good. Then we have X to the fourth divided by X squared. That should just give us X to the second. So this should be three X to the second. So then now you do the same thing over there. Now we need to simplify this. So we have a two X to the third here. Put it over that same X squared that you took out. So now we have two divided by one. That should give us positive two. X to the third divided by X to the second. And that should just give us X. Then now we do the same thing here. But keep in mind, we have a negative five X squared. We still follow the same procedures. Just put a negative five X squared. Negative five divided by positive one, that should just give us a, you said it, that should just give us a negative five. Good. X squared divided by X squared, anything divided by itself is just one. So we'll just leave it as negative five. I'll erase that in the corner. So then now we can break this up even further. Now we gotta use this term called the AC method. So we're only gonna focus on this area. Let me put a box around it so that way. Actually, let me put a little squiggly line. We're only gonna focus on this area for right now. We'll bring the X squared later on. So now we can think about, okay, I had an A here in the beginning, I had a B here, I had a C here. What I wanna show you is that we're going to work with the coefficients, the numbers in front of the variable. So the number here was three, right? We had A is equal to three. This was B, we're not using B right now. We're gonna use it a little later. Then we have C. C is negative five. So now I gotta think about, okay, AC method. Basically, you're only doing A times C. A times C should give you what? It should give you three times negative five. This will just give us negative 15. So now we have to think of factors of 15. Don't worry about the negative for now. Just think of the factors of 15. We have one and 15. We have three and five. So now we're going to focus now on our B term. We gotta think about, okay, if I use one of 15, whether I add or subtract, will it get me close to two? Absolutely not. It may get you close to 14, it could get you close to 16, but let's not use those. Now we have three and five. Can we use that? Yes, we can. Because let's say if you did five minus three, that would give you positive two. So we can use these values. So then now we're going to put that to replace it. So, you rewrite the expression. Still bring down your x squared. We have three x squared, and I'll color code it so that way you understand more of what I am reading. So we'll just put a three, we'll put the five, make sure you put the x's, and then we'll put negative five here. 
So now we have to figure out, okay, which is positive, which is negative. So if we have, let's say we put plus 3x, right? And then we put minus 5x. 3x minus 5x will give us negative 2x. Do we have a negative 2x? No. So that doesn't work. So now we can do, let's see, negative and plus. So now we have a negative 3x and a positive 5x. This will give us a positive 2x. That works. So we can use that. So now factor by grouping, we have to break up these terms. So how you can do that is, let's focus over here. So we're going to see what's a like. We have a 3 in both of them, right? So then now... You could put parentheses to help you better solve. So then now I can take out a three here. Now, do they also share something in common with each other? Of course they do. They each have an X. But remember, we're going to pick the lowest X. So then we put a three X here. So then now you do the same step how we did before. Three X squared divided by three X should just give you X. Negative 3x divided by 3x should give us a negative 1. Because remember, negative divided by a positive give us a negative. 3 divided by 3 gives us 1. x divided by x gives us 1. That's how I ended up with that answer. Now we do the same thing here. They both share a 5. But do they both share an x? No, because this negative 5 doesn't have an x. So we'll put an x here because 5x divided by 5 just gives us x. Then bring down negative 5 divided by 5 will just give us negative 1. The reason why I love factor by grouping is because in this step, if these parentheses do not match up to each other, that means you've done something wrong. So if I have like an x plus 1, that means I would just retract my steps and then go over, hmm, at which point did I mess up? So then now we can put all the terms together. We can bring down this x squared because now we want to write our final answer. This 3x and this 5 outside the parentheses, right? We can form our own parentheses for it. This will be 3x plus 5. This is the same, so we can put them in one parentheses. This will be x minus 1. Then now, all we have to do is just box our answer. So keep in mind, you can put it like this or you can write it like this. Let's say you're having an answer, um, let's say you're having an exam and they write it like this. Both of these answers, we just put or, both of these answers are very acceptable answers. They both mean the same thing. It's just like saying, if I had 3 times 2, that gives us 6, right? And I had 2 times 3, it still gives us 6. That is in, that falls with the commutative property. So both of these answers are acceptable. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope, you know, it opened your mind to factoring completely. Sometimes some students may think that this is, you know, Ooh, this question is a little crazy, but with me here, I got your back. <laughs> so please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.